Good afternoon. I wanted to take a few minutes and share some important information for our school um, about how we use information and use it correctly and also how to help our students be better users of information. I think any teachers or administrators or librarians could find this brief presentation a little bit helpful, especially as we're getting started in a brand new school year. The first thing I want to talk about is plagiarism. Plagiarism is defined as using another person's ideas or work as your own. Oftentimes this happens when students are doing research reports. They will write down facts and information and they will not credit the sources that they get their information from. This is a problem because it's very important to make sure that you give credit where credit is due. One way that plagiarism can be explained very well to students is to equate it with cheating. While students oftentimes do cheat, um, they know that it's not right. And so if you let them know that when you plagiarize and don't give credit, it's like you're cheating. You're looking at someone else's things and taking credit for it. You can also let students know that they will not receive any credit for assignments that are plagiarized. It's a district policy that they need to be aware of. Also, they need to understand that when it comes down to it, plagiarism is wrong because it's stealing another person's ideas. Their reputation is affected because they become a student who has not been trustworthy with other people's ideas. Let's talk about copyright for a minute. This is kind of a taboo subject um, in the teaching world because we don't understand it very well. Copyright is the right to copy and share a literary work that is granted by the government. A literary work can be books, can be worksheets, it can be music, it is images. If it has been created by somebody, they can have a copyright on it. That doesn't mean they do have one, but they can have one. It's quite a complicated system, but copyrights actually have been around since the 1700s, and its sole purpose is to protect people from having their work stolen. If you want to uh, get a little bit better understanding of how this works for us as educators, you can go to the website listed there, www.templetons.com. Um, at this site, Brad Templeton has put together a lot of good information about how to ethically use information, and copyright comes into play. Let me just give a fair bit of warning about fair use in public education. Fair use is a term that teachers love because it's kind of a gray area in information. We are granted special rights because we are teaching and because we're not making money off of the information that we are sharing in that way. So if you're only using a small selection of a piece of work, that is fine. If you are not able to get the author's permission because of time constraints, that's okay. There are, however, some specific guidelines to fair use that you're going to need to be aware of if you want to claim that privilege. So make sure that you're aware before you um, start using that and throwing it around. By the way, if a worksheet has the phrase illegal to copy on it, it is illegal to copy it. And just whiting it out or covering it up doesn't make it okay to run those copies off at the copy machine. So be very aware of that. Right to privacy. What does this have to do with information? Well, it's how we share personal information. We live in a country that protects our privacies with the First Amendment, and library users are granted those rights. That includes minor children. The library is not going to be sharing personal information or search records with any outside source unless there is a written court order. That includes checkout records as well. So teachers, you're not allowed to come into the library, and I can't tell you as the librarian what your students have checked out from here. How does it affect um, the adults at the school? Well, your personal records aren't going to get shared either. The principal can't come to the librarian and ask what teachers are using the professional development section. The library only keeps records that it needs to help the library function. Things like circulation, like how many books have been checked out, and which ones have never been checked out, and how many copies of which type of material that we have. So be aware that 
there is a right to privacy, and if you want to know how many books somebody has checked out, I can't tell you that. Challenges to library materials. Um, this doesn't happen often, but when it does, it often makes the news. Um, if a patron of a library has a concern about a library resource, they have the right to challenge that material. There's a very specific process for reviewing the relevance of all library materials. Our district is amazing. They have the procedures set out for you step by step at the website listed below. You can um, take a look at that. Um, as teachers, you're the front line of defense. You know why you're using the materials that you're using in your classroom. And if a parent has a problem with what their child is reading in school, hopefully you're going to hear about it before the principal or the librarian or the news stations. When you're talking to your parents about these concerns, make sure they understand that they don't have a right to make changes for other people's children. They can be concerned about their own children and make decisions for them, but not for other people's children. Um, on YouTube, there was recently a really interesting video put together by Dave Pilkey, who's the author of the Captain Underpants books, and he said it best, by making a simple change, we can understand better why removing things from the library just because you don't like it or don't agree with it is not the right way to handle things. I highly suggest that you search Dave Pilkey and banned books, and you'll get a real interesting way of looking at things. Regardless, if a parent does have a concern, um, uh, if you are working at the school, you're not alone. Let the librarian know. Let the principals know. We're here to help you and don't think that it's going to turn into something really big because most of these things can be handled quite simply with a good conversation. Finally, internet ethics. This is basically using the internet in a way that's fair and appropriate. It's about giving proper credit to authors of information that you find online and the images that are used. Creative Commons has been established online to help people who create images get the credit that they deserve for that. So you'll want to look into Creative Commons. Also make sure to set, follow the guidelines that are set forth by the school district. Every student has to sign an acceptable use policy before they use online resources. Make sure you've looked over that and you understand what it's talking about. Also, provide credit citations for information and images that you take from the internet. Just because it's online doesn't mean it's true. It also doesn't mean it's yours for the taking. So make sure that you are aware and that students are aware that online is a whole new world than some of us are used to if we've been around for a while. And there's a certain ethic that goes along with it. Make sure that you're not taking unfair advantage of people who aren't there to speak for themselves. Okay, Give credit. When you didn't create it, make sure we know who did. So that's just a brief rundown about some of the ethics of using information online. Here are some of the resources. Let's talk about giving credit. Here are some of the resources that I use to help put together this presentation. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me in the comments section underneath. Also, I'm going to include some other websites that are available and easier for you to click on in the section underneath of the video. Hope this has been helpful and have a great day.